There's so much attention on the markets right now because of the unprecedented performance. It has been escalating dramatically, thanks to unicorns and fairy dust. The world supply of unicorns is also infinite, so there's no need to worry about it, and the demand is always high. Congratulations to the central banks for their excellent work here. Actually, wait a minute. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to get into the truth. I wanted to look at what's happening with the economy, of course. We're going to talk about the markets and how overvalued they are right now. I just wanted to highlight something very quickly before I move into this. One of the most popular lines I've been reading over and over and over again is scared money don't make money. And I see this repeated over and over and over again. And people are really getting into the markets right now. They bought the dip. And of course, they have seen their small portfolios rise. It has done very well. Thank you to the Federal Reserve once again for making that happen, making that all possible. This isn't intelligent investing. This isn't smart people. This isn't anything except speculation based on the devaluation of the currency. If we can simply acknowledge that, then everything's okay. You can also bet on sporting events. You can bet in the casinos. They can do this online. It's the exact same thing. But in this case here, because the Federal Reserve and what they have been doing, all the central banks, in fact, it has made it quite one-sided here. And this is what I've talked about so many times before. If the Federal Reserve, if the central bank is printing money, if you can see that this is making its way throughout the system, of course, this will absolutely push up stocks and you don't know exactly which ones are going to go up. That's part of the gamble. That's part of the analysis. But of course, this trend can continue for the foreseeable future until it breaks. Starting with this article out of the UK, jobs bloodbath accelerates easing of lockdown for pubs, restaurants, and weddings. Essentially, the government wants to open this up because millions of people are out of work and it's not going to look good anytime soon if they don't get back work and if the businesses aren't open and running and everything starts running smoothly. This is a time when people need to have that income. The government cannot create an infinite amount of stimulus, though they believe that they can, of course, and they'll tell the public that that is the case. This right here just gives you an example of what's happening all around the world. And if you look at it statistically, even when they do open up, in many cases we have seen that the business just isn't there. The demand just isn't there. There are many reasons for this. It depends on where we're at. It depends on the industry and so on. But regardless, this is what's happening right now. The governments are trying to look at reopening. We'll see if they're able to do it on a wide scale. But the reason why they're doing this is simply because they know what's coming, and that is a lot of more unemployment. People aren't visiting branches. Banks are wondering how many they actually need. In this case here, we have seen so many people that have done all their banking online. And of course, that shows you that maybe they didn't really need to be going to the branches anyway. And that isn't a good thing for those who work at the branches, of course. Well, what can they do? They consolidate. If you read this article here out of the Wall Street Journal, they can consolidate. But that isn't really a good thing for so many of the employees who rely on a paycheck. This happens to be just one individual bank they're showing on the screen. But this applies to so many different, uh, all these different institutions out there, all different financial establishments. In fact, it goes beyond that. How many people right now are using an alternate method of whatever it might be? And maybe it's banking online. Maybe it's where they shop. Maybe it's buying things on Amazon instead of going to the store. This has really changed consumer habits in a drastic way. And what we had seen before, for example, with the online purchases was that it was a slow and steady rise. And I believe the 2019 numbers were around 10 to 11 percent of all retail sales taking place online. That stepped up dramatically. I want to get you some numbers where I think it was something like 20 percent or so and even greater in some cases. But I'll give you the, the official numbers when I see them. This just shows you that it has spiked up. Now, will it come back down and resume the trend? I personally don't think so. I think that this will accelerate the trend and continue that. This means that there are a huge shift that's happening. There are a lot of jobs that will be lost as a result. 
Yes, we do have robotics and an automation that are coming online that are making things easier for people, that are helping people out. But at the same time, because the rate of adoption is so fast, it will displace jobs. Really quickly, this is just a chart that corresponds to that. You can see the net change in U.S. bank branches. It's been going on for a long time. Let's face it. Of course, this is an accelerating trend over the years since the financial crisis. The banks simply do not need to be in every corner. So many people are doing their business online today. You could deposit checks online. You could do basically everything you need to. It's faster. It's easier. It's more convenient for a lot of people. And that's why they're going this way. But that's not very good for those type of jobs that people might have been in for a decade or two or even beyond that. All hail the V-shaped recovery. Well, look at this here. I don't know if that counts as a job. Fewer hours, less pay, and more anxiety greet returning workers. This is an issue that I've been discussing, of course, and we have seen what's been going on in, in this period of time. Think about how many people had their job but the salary was cut. Is that really okay? Well, you know, they're glad to be working. They're glad to be employed. They might just stay at the position. Okay, fine. Hopefully this comes back online soon and everything is good to go. But how many people for the next six months, for the next year, for the next two years, they're going to be waiting to get back to the salary they were at before? How many businesses do you know that will be saying, you know what, maybe we don't really need to increase their salary. Let's leave it where it is. People should be happy to accept the salary that they're given at this point. This is going to happen. You know how tight some of these businesses can be. Others will increase and you'll see that. But in so many cases, people will not get the money that they need. There's a lot of data corresponding to that. Many companies could replace their workers with robots. As they say here, during downturns, companies usually invest in automation to save on labor costs. This is very important because we definitely see the trend going this way. In the financial services industry, we see a lot of this robo-advisor. Essentially what that means is people today, they can go online to their different uh, banking establishments, they can open up their apps, and they can click a few buttons, and the system, which is largely automated, will invest the money based on what they've inputted into the system. This is really what those financial advisors were doing anyway. It's just a couple of clicks. They put them into certain funds and that's it. But now today you have a robo advisor which is doing it all for you. Now this shows you that there is a huge shift that's occurring in businesses that are creating this quote unquote artificial intelligence, which is not really AI anyway, but in creating that software, in, in building these different robots, of course, there are new jobs being created there, but for a large percentage of the jobs, they can actually be replaced and very quickly and in increasing pace, they are being replaced and that just shows you that things are really not going to be that V shape that they've been talking about. As the company looks to it, you know, do we hire that 30% back? Do we maybe invest a little bit of money right now and try to bring in something that's going to remove the desire or the need to keep them going? This is an article in the AP and basically it's talking about what's happening with the job situation and temporary closures becoming permanent and so on. I'm going to touch on a couple of points in here. I didn't want to get into all the details. It talks about, you know, personal instances and everything. But essentially what we're looking at here is it took five years for the economy to regain 8.8 .8 million jobs it lost during the Great Recession. This time, despite the job growth during May, roughly 20 million jobs remain lost. For every 10 layoffs, there have been three new hires, according to the University of Chicago. The job picture is horrible. I don't see the US labor market recovering back to full employment for another five to 10 years. So imagine what that would do to the economy as a whole. If people are really subsistent in this point here, they're, they're relying on government throughout this period, we are going to see the deficits continue to rise, the debt continue to rise, 
people who can't go out there and go to the restaurants and the movie theaters and, and trips and everything, they are going to be cutting back on expenses. When you have an economy that is 70% reliant on the consumer, that's not a good thing. I keep hearing about all of this fantastical, wonderful fairy dust that's being spread all over the stock markets, but that doesn't help the vast majority of people. Yeah, they've got a 401k, but are they going to be cashing out now necessarily? No, absolutely not. The average person doesn't have all of this disposable income. They're living paycheck to paycheck. So while their 401k might be rising at this point, by the way, after coming down significantly, after a rise up, people only want to ever point out where they had the lowest point and say, oh, well, I gained 30%, I gained 40%. But, you know, take this how it really is. Regardless, anyway, what we're seeing here is that a vast majority of people do not see the benefits of all of that fairy dust. And that's really what this article out of CNBC is about. Wall Street's latest surge isn't benefiting many Americans. And I'm not going to harp on this too much longer, but I just wanted to say that we are noticing, particularly with the retail investors, I mean, I see the comments all the time and people are just with with their chest sticking out thinking that they are so smart and intelligent they're able to number one beat the market they're smarter than warren buffett they are the you know the richest person in the world now because they made 74 dollars and they don't understand market cycles because in the year 2000 they weren't even born yet and yet they believe that the world revolves around them and so on. It's just, it's just silly. It's just silly. And what we're seeing today is truly, truly, it's an unfortunate situation, really. Because the more often we have corrections, the healthier and the better the markets would be. But nobody wants to see that anymore. You want to see perpetual growth in the markets? Welcome to the roaring 20s. They thought the same thing. With all of the money printing, with all of the stimulus measures, you would think that you'd be able to boost the velocity of money, the M2 money stock in this case here, but it doesn't work like that. You can't force this to actually happen. Look at the velocity on this chart going back from the late 90s up until present day. It's falling further and further and further. Their magic that they're trying to create with the central banks, their expansion of the deficits will never be able to actually go where they, let's say, where they want it to go publicly. We know where they are obviously um, want this to be uh, behind the scenes. They want it into the hands of the globalist elite. But when you see what's going on with the 50% group the the bottom 50 percent they're not going to see the benefits the middle class it's going to continue to evaporate and we can look at the pension funds and how terrible absolutely terrible the situation is for them This is an absolutely horrible title, and I'll read it to you here out of Bloomberg. Guardians of the world economy stagger from rescue to recovery. And I just, guardians of the world economy, that just, it, it gets me at a deeper level, really. The world's governments and central banks are shifting from rescue to recovery mode as the deepest slump since the Great Depression show signs of bottoming out. And we've seen that so-called V-shaped recovery where everything falls off a cliff and then we have this little tiny little turnaround and, and that's what they suggest is the V-shaped recovery. When you, when you look at all the data, that's really what it looks like. And that's, of course, very accurate to scale and my fantastic artwork there. But essentially, when you look at what the Atlantic had said when they put Ben Bernanke's face up there, hero, when you see what's going on on a deeper level here, the central banks are everything. Without the central bank activity, these markets would be in the red every single day. There's no doubt about it. 
and they're not even hiding it anymore. Take a look at this CNBC article. Look for the S&P 500 to turn positive for the year with a boost from the Fed in the week ahead. Wait a second, we're, we're getting a boost from the Fed. I thought they were doing that on every single level, creating all of these different programs that we have never seen before. And yet here, they're talking about this insanity. The Fed's two-day meeting is the big event for markets in the coming weeks and in the coming week, and traders are hoping for more details on stimulus and a possible new program. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Well, I will bring that information to you on Wednesday at 2 p.m. They will, of course, release the statement. There's not much that's going to be able to come out of this, I don't think, anyway. I mean, my goodness, how far they have gone already. We'll see, though. Two things really quickly. This is stunning. At the peak of the speculative fervor in February, small traders bought to open 7.5 million call contracts this week. They bought 12 million. Watch what people do, not what they say. They're full bore bullish on steroids. You could see that in the bottom chart there. It just shows you right now that there is essentially nobody that's bearish. And some people believe that the economy is doing fantastic. Some people believe that it isn't doing well at all when they're actually looking at the data. But regardless, everyone right now is all in. In line with that information, there's this from Real Investment Advice. The total put call ratio all suggests similar positioning with investors getting extremely aggressive buying call options. The ratio is back to more extreme elevations. The last time we saw this was in January and that didn't exactly end up so well doesn't mean that we are hitting the exact same situation. We know that there are, you know, a different set of data that's coming through every single day. But on the RSI, it's looking exaggerated as well as when you look at this ratio in particular. Well, I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to check me out on Instagram and Twitter, you can do so at The Money GPS. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, you can do that at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to know what's going on in the financial system for real, well, then you got to get my two books. They explain everything you need to know, and you can get them down on the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. And don't go anywhere. Have you seen this yet? It's a really good video. Breaks down what you need to know. Click on it. I'll see you there.